Today, we are going to be doing a modification that I have long wanted to do on my 1988 Saab 900 Turbo, essentially, well, ever since I bought it. And that is, of course, installing a full SPG kit on it. Let's get into it. Everything you'll be seeing in this video is coming from an extremely helpful guide on the SPG panel installation process, what you need, etc. It's incredibly detailed. I'm going to link that at the top of the description. So I'll be referencing that for just about every step of this process. If you're doing this, I highly recommend reading through it. But uh, without further ado, here's our SPG panels. A complete SPG kit is actually 10 panels. There's these six middle panels here, which go on the fender, the door, and the rear quarter and also some front and rear bumper extensions, which replace this piece as well as the one in the rear. I was able to source these six middle pieces secondhand. Uh, I'll get more into those in a second, but really the SPG and non-SPG bumper extensions are very, very, very similar. So I'm not too worried about not replacing the two bumper extensions here, but uh, as you can see, these are actually in you know, relatively speaking, pretty decent shape. I could probably throw them on the car right now and given how messed up the paint is on most of the rest of the car, it would look fine. However, the first step in our process of getting this installed is going to be paint. So I did a video where I restored the bumpers. It's gonna be very similar to that. We're going to wet sand everything. The primer has not been delivered yet, but I will show that in the video when it comes. Uh, and this is the exact paint code that we need to use from SEM, an amazing brand of paint. I should have about two and a half cans of this, which should be enough. Now panning to our table of miscellaneous parts that we also need. First off, I have some generic rubber. I picked this up at Home Depot. Um, this is used because there are a few little mud flaps that come with the SPG kit. Uh, mine is missing a couple of them, so we'll have to cut those out. This foam is going to be used between the rails and the car to help protect the paint and make sure it's sitting on there evenly. We also have this weather stripping here, which will be used to replace this old weather stripping that's kind of coming off. Sheet metal screws, bunch of rivets, rivet gun, some backup plates for the rivets, and then some caulk, which we're going to place around the all the holes we drill and when we put the sheet metal screws in to help seal that up prevent water from getting in there and uh causing future rust so without further ado i think the first thing we need to do is pull off these old ugly panels or trim pieces right here these are just stuck on with adhesive That came off incredibly easy, actually. Doesn't look like it left a ton of residue behind. If anyone has a use for these and would like them, please send me a Instagram DM and I can ship this out to you for the cost of uh, what it takes to ship them. But these are coming off way easier than I thought. And they're still nice and pliable too. I almost wonder if these are replaced at some point. I'll use some goo gone to get the rest of this residue off. As you noticed when I pulled off this old trim, my car is actually already pre-drilled for the SPG panels. Benefit of that is 
I don't have to spend time measuring and drilling into the body of my car worrying that I'm going to get it wrong. Downside is, however, I don't have the special grommets to fit into those holes. What I have done is I went up to O'Reilly's local auto parts store and I picked out a wide variety of just generic square plastic fasteners that they have. So all of these have not worked. They're all too big. The only one that does work is this Kia nylon kit from Doorman. This is the number right here. I need 20 of these. Unfortunately, they only come in packs of four. If you're watching this video in advance of doing this job, uh, Sabitz actually sells a complete OEM uh, kit. The cock is loaded in the gun. Obviously, I have gone through and cleaned all this once again after doing the goo gone to make sure this surface is completely clean. Might just kind of use my fingers like this to get it in the rough spot. and stick one of those in, wipe most of that away. So there's one side done, uh, as you can tell, made quite a bit of a mess, although I think I got better at it towards the end. So I'm going to take some Goo Gone to this now, or just some cleaner and get all this excess crap off. There we go. I'd say that is looking. Pretty, pretty good. These metal bars right here are how the SPG panels mainly attach to the body. So we have our piece for the door here, our piece for the rear quarter, and our piece for the fenders. These are slightly different side to side. Uh, you'll see your top side should have this little hook on it, and the angle of this bottom piece should be just over 90 degrees. So if I hold it still, you can see that this side should be facing up. Regardless, both are still the same length. So I just bought this generic two millimeter thick foam on Amazon. Um, we might need to come back and do more of this once we have the panels fitted to make sure they line up perfectly. But I'm gonna start by cutting one thin strip for each of the six rails. Uh, that's mainly just to protect the paint and also you know, reduce any potential vibrations and just help it fit as it should. So let's get to cutting. With our foam strips cut, we need to get the holes cut out where the bolts are going to go through. I'm just going to kind of roughly mark it with a punch because I'm not quite sure what else to use. Turned out pretty good. You can see all five of them are punched through. Um, if you get the same foam I did, be a little careful. This last one here, I was just a little bit too rough with it and it kind of tore it, but it'll be fine. It's still connected and it'll also be pinched back behind here once we actually put it on. So I'll get this done now with the other five and then we can test fit them on the car. All six have been cut. It really didn't take very long, but uh, I guess without further ado, let's get them test fitted. I am just going to be using some generic screws. Um, these are pretty small, but just generic, nothing special needed uh, for these. If you do order the Saab OEM ones, they should come with their own screws. And again, the side with the barb should be facing up and the bottom part should be at slightly more than a 90 degree angle, just like this one. The rails here do not have perfectly circular holes. You can see that they're oval, so you have just a little bit of wiggle room side to side, up and down when you install them. But for now, we're just gonna put them on and we'll adjust as needed later. I have to say these plastic nuts are really doing their job. I mean, that's not gonna come off. That's on there nice and solid.
From looking at this right off the bat, I think I have them all lined up just about perfectly. However, I'm gonna do a little bit of tinkering to make sure all of them are perfectly even. The way I'm confirming this is just by using the small rail from the other side. You could use a ruler or something with a straight edge. I'm just making sure that this kind of seats the same on both sides and it, and it lines up because you can eyeball it and it might look good, but if it doesn't sit kind of flushly on both, that's a good test right there. So it's all good. Let's move on to the other side. Before we can install our panels, we first have to paint them. And before we can paint them, we have to prep them for paint. So that will entail a couple of things. First off, we need to wet sand this. You can see like this panel, for example, really isn't too bad. They all have some scratches and nicks, but for the most part, they don't have much damage. That one's pretty scratched up. The only significant imperfections I don't think we'll be able to fix just by sanding is this top corner getting messed up right here on this rear corner panel. So I think without further ado, first thing we need to do before we even begin sanding is removing this old weather stripping. So this, I could try just super gluing down and putting back on, but I did get new weather stripping, just more generic foam stuff from Amazon. Here's the brand and everything, if you're interested in getting the same. I think I got about 50 feet of this, which is more than enough. We'll use this foam after everything's been painted, but I wanted to point it out now because we do have to pull this old foam off. All the panels kind of look the same, but there's remnants stuck on the side here. And then of course this piece as well. So I'm gonna remove all that first. A few minutes later. Next, we are going to begin the sanding process. So the guide online recommends only using 400 grit. When I did my bumpers, the bumpers had a lot more imperfections. I did use a bit more of an aggressive grit on some of the rougher spots, such as 220. I'm only going to be using this on those couple of spots where there's a little bit of damage, like I showed to help at least smooth it out a little bit. Um, besides that though, we'll be using 400 grit, and then we will also possibly go over it with some 600 or 800, depending on how smooth it feels after the 400 is done. I have this sander right here. You don't need this, you can do it by hand, but this is gonna make it a lot easier. The 220 grit I will do by hand just because I don't wanna to be too aggressive on this. We are definitely smoothing it out, but these are really deep down in here. We need body fill to make that perfect, unfortunately. The only other panel with any sort of divots in it is this other rear quarter panel, which kind of had the same thing, although not as deep with some aggressive sanding, I was able to get most of it out. It looked pretty bad before, but I don't want to go any deeper. I'm trying to fade it around here. So I think we'll just leave it. Let's move on to the 400 grit wet sanding. Here's one panel done. Um, really not too bad. Uh, the quick sanding down here smoothed out all these, uh, you know, just little pieces of degree, debris or tar or whatever that was getting kicked up um, over time on the bottom. So I'm gonna have to do this to the other five panels now and uh, not really looking forward to it. So I'll catch up with you all when I'm done with that. Two hours later. Every panel is now prepped for paint. Looks pretty good, very smooth by the touch of the hand. Um, you can see there's just a few spots where I had to be a little bit more aggressive, just little pieces of tar that were stuck on there or little indentations that were small enough I could sand them down and smooth out. But yeah, let's get this stuff painted. Both of these are from SEM branded paint. They make some really high quality stuff. First off, we have our primer right here. This is just some black primer. I use the same exact stuff on the bumpers. And right here are two and a half cans of the actual bumper coat. You can see the number right there, 39273. This stuff is basically a perfect match 
to the OEM color. This paint is a little bit expensive, as you can tell, but it's super high quality paint. You guys will see how good it looks in the sun. But for tonight, we're just going to be doing the primer, and then tomorrow, we'll do the actual paint. We'll be doing two to three light coats of this primer with about five to 10 minutes between coats, so let's get to it. Two and a half coats are done. I have a little bit of primer left I'm going to leave because you can see if you're not careful, this paint does start to leave drops. So there's a big one right there, which I think I'm gonna have to sand down in the morning once it's all cured. But the rest of the panels, besides that, that one's got a tiny little spot right there. But otherwise, I'd say they, uh, they're looking Pretty, pretty good so far. Next morning and we have relocated to the backyard. Um, I went over a couple of the areas where the drops were with some 400 uh, grit sandpaper. I went with 800 initially, but it was way smoother than the, uh, the rest of the finish here. So I just stuck with 400. Uh, it's nice and smoothed out now. It looks kind of goofy. That spot's better. So we'll be following the same process with the SEM actual bumper paint and uh, can't wait to see how this looks. Let's get to it. Two and a half hours has passed. The paint is dry, the sun is out, and wow. Yeah, reminded once again why this paint is so awesome and just looks so good on these panels. It's not 110% perfect, however I would say I did about a 97, 98% good job on this. Um, the only thing that you can really see are the couple of deep gouges from earlier, like I mentioned, but they really aren't that noticeable. That's the worst one right there. Just look at all the flake. In this paint. Let's take this back into the garage and start getting ready to mount them on the car. Next we need to tackle our mud guards mud flaps here. So there are four of these that come with the kit if you're just doing the six panels like mine. There's one on each front fender piece and then there's one on each rear quarter panel piece. Thankfully my kit came with three of the four however one of the rear pieces is missing so I've taken the old one off or the existing one off so we can cut a duplicate for the other side. Um, if you don't have any of the mud guards, don't worry. Look at that guide once again. That guide has pictures with exact measurements, which are super helpful if you don't have a template like this to go off of. Now, one slight problem, you can see how thick this one is, whereas the rubber from Home Depot is quite a bit thinner, probably about half as thin or half as thick. So I don't know how this will work. Let's just cut one out and see how it goes. And unfortunately, this is the uh, least amount that I could buy from Home Depot. I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's drill some holes. Gotta make those holes just a hair bigger but I nailed them. The mud flaps in the front here are different for the SPG panels you can see right here. Much smaller, um, they have two bolt holes at the bottom as well. So I'll remove the existing one right here. Just a T30. Another item we need to take care of before actually installing the panels is these rivets on the door. So there's this weather stripping down here and there are six rivets that hold it in going across the bottom of the door. We need to drill those rivets out because when we mount the door panel, it actually has holes down here for new rivets to go in to help hold that panel on. So this weather stripping right here, I've kind of played with trying to remove. It looks like it's a bit hard to get these little yellow 
tabs to come out and you know not work properly so i think i'll be fine if i just hold this out of the way while drilling uh, the guide recommends using a 9 30 seconds drill bit here so that's what we'll use perfect not too bad Sweet. Got to do the same to the other side now. We can now begin installing our weather stripping on the panels. So on the front panel, we will be installing weather stripping on the top and down the side. On the middle panel, we will be installing on both sides and the top. And on the rear, we'll be doing the top and the inner side. So in other words, we will not be doing the bottom on any of the panels, as well as the wheel well portion on the front and rear. So. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Here is right where we will be mating this. There's a nice smooth mating surface that we cleaned and prepped earlier. With all of the foam applied, well, it's finally time to begin mounting the panels to the car. So these rails, obviously being very old, despite being cleaned up, they're still not super smooth. So what we're going to do is put some grease on there to help the panels slide on better and uh, hopefully make this process a lot easier. I want to start first with the door panel. That's also what the guide recommends. Um, there is a small cutout in the panel here that you can kind of use to help line everything up. That was an easy panel, so <laughs> time to do the uh, the hard ones. So really the trick with these is uh, there isn't one. So uh, the back of the rails here are hooked so they're supposed to hook over the tip on the top here and <laughs> there isn't really an easy way to do this the guide kind of says it's either really easy or really hard especially when working with older rails like this it's going to be a bit more difficult so I'm going to keep trying um, it kind of recommends to just hit it slightly upward uh, with the butt of your hand so that's what I'm trying to do while also not damage these. Let's take a step back for a second. You might notice my door is off. Well, that's because I tried for about 30 minutes to hammer this on with my hand the way the guide recommends before realizing and consulting with some other people who have done this before, who said you can simply do this panel first don't put this panel on and you can slide it on just like I did for this panel. So instead of removing this panel, I thought, well, I'll try to remove the door. That is so much easier. <laughs> Do not try to pop it on. And I'm thinking that hopefully we can get it hooked around. Sure enough, second try I was able to get that on and it's all set in place. Now coming back to this panel, I had to pull it back off because it popped off down here when the door came off. Um, so I have to reapply that. And one thing I noticed is down here on this portion, you need to add a second layer of foam because when this gets tightened up, you're gonna need that extra foam. And when we did take it off, there was much thicker foam on this whole portion here. So I've done the same right there and right there. So I'm gonna put this back on now. Uh, I've also put more grease on to hopefully make it slide on easier. And then we'll move to this panel. This rear panel should be similar to the front one. I do wanna fill you guys in on a little trick I used on that one. I was having trouble with the foam rolling back as I slid it on. So you could use something on the paint like soapy water to 
help it slide better. I didn't really want to do that. So what I use is a little piece of masking tape just like sitting right here to hold the foam down against the SPG panel. And then after I slid it on, I'm able to just pull it right off. I noticed that the rear panel here did not want to fit perfectly snug. And upon further inspection, there's a little like mud flap here almost. It's kind of sticking out. It's held on by two rivets right there and it's just, it sticks out. So that can't go in the whole way. And as far as I can tell, it should be removed because we are also installing new mud flaps right here. So I'm gonna drill that out real quick. What I'm trying on this side is something a little different. I've removed the rail from the door um, because I won't be able to slide it on with the rail on there. Remove my tape and uh, I think I got this pop back in just by hitting it. So I think the pop in trick can work so long as you already have it started. You definitely need to be wary of the weather stripping in all areas. Uh, this one was hanging on by just enough. I was able to fish my finger in there and pull it back out and line it up. It's going to be smushed to the door uh, once we finish up mounting all the panels, but uh, awesome. That's the smoothest one we've done yet. Quite a bit of time has passed since that last clip, but we have all six of the panels on and I am so ecstatic with how this looks. So I struggled a bit to get this corner here around the edge. You might remember I struggled to do it on the other side. This one was even worse, so much so that I would pulled it off a few times. I added a second layer of foam to the back of the rail for about a six inch portion right here. That didn't really help. I was pulling and pulling, trying to get it around to a point where this started to crack a little bit. I was finally able to get it just enough by sticking this pry tool in there and pulling it on here where it wasn't cracked and it was just enough to be able to get it over. But all six of them are on. So, I mean, we still got a lot to do. We've still got to drill some holes and mount all three of these the rest of the way. To mount most of the rest of this stuff, we need to jack the car up and take the wheels off. That's better. It is time to finish mounting all three SPG panels to the body of the car. I'm going to start with the door panel because the door panel is going to be the less messy of the three. So the guide recommends using rivets for this. Personally, uh, since I'll probably be removing these panels again at some point in the future to have the whole car repainted, um, I don't want to use rivets. I also could not find rivets that were the right size. According to the guide, they should be five millimeters wide and have a shaft depth of 20 millimeters, which is pretty big. Um, I couldn't find anything like that off the shelf, and I realized I could just use nuts and bolts for this. It's going to be way easier regardless. So all we need to do to finish mounting the door panel is use these six former rivet holes where the uh, factory rivets were holding in this weather stripping here. We have to line the weather stripping back up like this, and then the underside of the door panels have six holes that line up here. So I'm going to feed the bolt through the top with a little washer. And then on the bottom side, use another washer and a little nut. So let's get to it. If you get underneath it like this, it makes it a lot easier to visually line everything up. So I've got these two down and just started. Now we'll move to the other end. I should note, these are M5 bolts um, that are about a little bit over an inch long. I tried to match the rivet size as best I could. They're definitely not, you know, they're a little bit longer than they should be. There are a few things we need for the front. 
First off is our mud flap from earlier. Um, on my car, I'm not going to need to drill any holes for this. There are the two on the bottom, which will bolt to the SPG panel. And then there are the three on top, which are going to bolt uh, to the factory drilled uh, mud flap holes. Uh, these are coming off the mud flap that I am replacing. So I don't need any new hardware for this. We also have these metal tabs. So these are NLA. Uh, I'll put the part number on the screen for these. I actually got these from Modern Classic Saab. Uh, feel free to send him an email if you're looking for these. He sent them out pretty cheap, just had them 3D printed. So huge thank you to him. He's got a ton of awesome Classic 999 parts if you're ever looking for anything aftermarket or cool. You can see our front panel is just kind of hanging loose in the back down here. So this tab kind of goes up can see our big hole for it right here. It slides over here like this, and then there's a piece on the body up top here. You can see that it hooks around. So that's gonna help hold this up and into place right here. And lastly, we have our little metal tab here. This, we just need to drill a small hole for and put a general sheet metal screw in. I am going to start with this plastic tab here because it'll help line up all the other things we need to do. I will just be using a generic sheet metal screw for this, same as I am doing for a lot of the other holes that we need to drill. Already you can tell it completely sucked this bottom corner of the panel in so it's no longer just hanging down. Next, I wanna put this little retaining tab on. This piece of metal, if you haven't already noticed, is very thin and bendable. So I'm going to hold this against here and just mark. With a punch where I need to drill that hole and I'll bend this back out of the way. So I am going to put just a little bit of caulk around here. And the front panel is complete. Lastly, let's tackle the rear panel. There are four holes we need to drill for this. Similar to the front, there is a little metal tab here we will have to drill a hole for. This one, unfortunately, does not have pre-drilled holes for the mud flap that we need to install, so we'll be drilling two holes right there. And lastly, if we come under the front, you will see there is a hole right here, which is going to hold the front of the panel snug to the car, so we will need to drill a hole right there as well. I am getting this bolt started just so that way it holds this panel in place while we drill the other holes. Get our mud flap lined up. And now I'm gonna put caulk on all four holes. We're going to put a washer on the one bolt that goes on the underside, just because the hole is a little bit too big for the head of the bolt. You might not need to do that, depending on what size sheet metal screws you get, but I've found that this size seems to be working just about perfectly for all applications here. And there we go, we are all done. So at this point, all we really need to do are put the wheels back on, drop the car down and see how it looks. So I'm gonna do that off camera, take this car somewhere else out of the garage and we'll take a look at the final results. I've been out here for a few minutes just admiring this, taking some photos and I am so, so happy with how this turned out. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is how long this took. As you can imagine, this is not a simple afternoon project. I had a four day weekend. It is now the morning of the fourth day and I'm done. Now, I haven't worked 
all day, every day on it. So realistically, especially if you're not painting, I think you could probably get this job done in two days. If you are doing paint, I would think three days is totally doable for a job like this. Looking back, compared to the guide, there's not much I would do differently outside of installing the front panel first by removing the uh, rail on the door slightly and then do front to back essentially for the installation as opposed to just doing the door panel first. That's how I would do it from my experience. This is my first time doing this job and as you can see, I was able to tackle it without a ton of trouble. Here's kind of a close up look of it, just how well it lines up and honestly, <laughs> like I said, I'm so happy. The paint just looks so good. So with this car now having the SPG wheels and the SPG kit, well, I guess it is kind of a uh, fake SPG and uh, <laughs> the contrast, the gray to the Malachite green. The guys, this just looks so good. I'm so excited. I'm re-energized, reinvigorated to figure out these remaining leaks. It was good to take a break from all that. If you're interested in supporting the channel some more, check out the merch I have linked at the top of the description. Build it better. The picture of the 900, which is now, I guess, a bit outdated because we've got the SPG kit on. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you've done this job before, leave any helpful hints that you might have in the comments because there's currently no other video on how to do this job, but wow. I just cannot get over how good this looks, how much it has transformed the look of this car. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.